Hi, it's Keith Townsend, principal of the CTO Advisor. Welcome to this Insight in IT video series. If you're aspiring to become a CIO, CTO, or a senior IT executive, or if you're already a IT executive, and you just want to hear commentary from your peers about the ups, the downs, the many rewards to the journey of becoming a senior IT executive, this video series is for you. It's a set of engaging conversations with some extremely accomplished individuals. I hope you enjoy the series. So Kyle, thanks for joining IT Insights. Pretty excited. This is the first of many sponsored interviews with the team over at Flexera. So first off, thanks Flexera for sponsoring. Let's start off. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get here where you're at now as the CIO of Flexera? <laughs> Uh, sure, Keith, and thanks for having me. It's great to meet, meet with you and talk to you in person. So, um, yeah, I've been in this this space for over two decades now. I'm definitely dating myself, but um, I started out like a lot of people uh, on the technical side. I was a, an electronic engineer, if you can believe that, way back in the day. Uh, and then I morphed into more of a general IT background, uh, and I morphed from that into an information security background when that became sort of topical. Um, and I'm currently the CIO and also the CISO at Flexera. So I actually wear two hats, Keith. I'm responsible for the IT side, but also responsible for the security side as well. Uh, so it's an interesting place to be, um, being in the seat of, of, of the two roles. So how long have you been at Flexera? You know, uh, I joined in January 2017, but I'm actually a boomeranger, which is, uh, you know, a phrase we use for people who were with the company and left and, you know, took a hiatus and came back. So um, 2017, but I was around before in a different uh, incarnation of the company, if you will. So let's talk about, you know, kind of pre-CIO, CISO, and, and how those two morphed, because as we talk about careers and paths, I know initially myself, I wanted to one day become a CIO. And, and okay. you'll laugh that uh, I've gotten much, much, much clearer perspective on the role and I no longer want to become a CIO. So tell me, have, have you always wanted to become a CIO and how did you kind of progress to this point in your career? Yeah, I don't think I, you know, I grew up, I wanted, when I grew up, I wanted to be an astronaut, right, uh, Keith? So I guess I spun off in a different direction. But um, yeah, it was never sort of an aspiration technically. It, you know, I, I really uh, loved the field. I was always passionate about technology. Um, and, and then I think it was just a natural extension when you're in it long enough and you move forward. You know, I got to a place that one day I was a CIO. It sort of happened like that. Uh, but again, you know, I was moving in the CISO, CIO direction because I think they're really joining the hips uh, at, the, at the hip. So, you know, I was able to bring a lot to the table with respect to my background in each. So we're getting closer and closer. Matter of fact, we're recording this during spring break, but we're getting closer to the end of the school year. And... Yeah. Always, you know, we have these, whether they're LinkedIn posts, blog posts, but these super helpful questions around college grads. And if you were to talk to a college grad now looking to get into technology, what advice would you give them? You know, it's a great question. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a huge believer, Keith, in uh, personality tests, first of all, you know, Gallup Strength Finder, things of that nature, just, just to figure out what makes you click, right? What makes you excited about getting up uh, at the beginning of the day? Um, and then taking those frameworks and sort of adapting it or sort of molding it towards something you think you might be interested in. So I would say, first of all, make sure that's your passion. Um, and then beyond that, uh, you know, you got the technical side of the business, which is really, really important. Uh, and then you got the business side. So I would say balance both, but don't don't swing too far in either direction. Uh, and then continuous learning. It's not like you graduate college and you're done. I mean, if you move into the world of IT, um, you know, there is a need to stay abreast of new technology, stay current. And that's a good thing. Um, so, you know, just keep on top of what's happening within the marketplace and, and make sure that you're current. And I think that's one of the more difficult parts, specifically around this type of profession. There's, I think, similar professions where it's constantly moving. What you learned in school will not be enough to start right. a job, and what you need for your first job won't be enough to go to that next level, or even, frankly, 
keep your job. Yes. But that said, what are kind of like the top three most difficult parts of IT? The top three most difficult parts. Well, you know, so it's interesting. I think for years, Keith, we've been um, bemoaning the fact we didn't have a seat at the table, and then suddenly we got a seat at the table, right? And and now I think the the onus is on us to to, uh, to show why we're able to pull that chair up and why we ought to be there. So you know, um, what I find in my day to day. In a, on a day-to-day basis, what I do is I'm crafting a lot of messaging around the state of IT or the state of ICE, uh, security to different stakeholders who see it through a different lens. And so that could be the CFO who, uh, you know, is curious about our IT spend. We are investing, under-investing in technology, and we certainly have some tools uh, within Flexera to help with that. It could be the CEO and it could be the board who are more interested in sort of the risk profile of the company and where they where they stand. So yeah, that was a challenge, you know, getting that attention, and then we got the the attention, and now the onus uh, is on us, I think, to step up and make sure that we continue to be heard. So let's pause and digest digest a couple of these uh, top three challenges as we go on. Yep. One of the things I find specifically difficult in my role in advising organizations is getting that message from the C suite at your level all the way down to, and I like to pick on this role, so. If you're a DNS administrator and you're watching this, I'm sorry. But if you're a DNS administrator and you you know you're you're doing you're going in and you're making your DNS changes, yeah. at some point you have to be able to, at least my it's my philosophy, you have to be able to relate what you do to some value that you offer the business. Right. How do you help align your organization to having this new role of having a seat at the table? So I think there are two parts uh, to that question. One is perhaps making sure that the people within IT recognize the value that they bring to the table, all right? Um, and, 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 And certainly over the years, I think that has become more abundantly clear, certainly for us, the, the move to a work from home arrangement as part of COVID, I mean, that really brought to attention a lot of the good stuff that the IT team had invested in terms of putting infrastructure, putting solutions in place to facilitate that. Um, that all came to light. So, you know, I think that was a, was a wonderful process, not COVID itself, but actually for IT um, to, to put themselves front and center in terms of relevance there. Um, and then for the rest of the company in terms of bringing that the, the, the importance, the value of IT to the front. Again, it's tied to that, right? When when you are in a position that you can enable people, make them productive, uh, help their day uh, be a little easier with technologies you invest in, uh, you know, I think that brings a lot of attention in a good way back to IT and the value to bring to a to a given company. So let's go on. What's number two? What's one of the second most difficult parts of IT? Uh, you know, I would say probably the fact that, again, and maybe this is a good thing and a bad thing, again, the technology is constantly changing, right? So we talked about that, is you you have to stay current, you got to stay atop of your game. It's a very fluid, dynamic environment. So that's the second challenge. Um, maybe the last one is your team is never a big enough key, right? You just <laughs> never have enough people right. to get things done. We all sort of struggle with that. But, you know, over over the years, we, we found creative ways to overcome those challenges, whether it's through um, eking out inefficiencies, bringing automation to the table. We, we always seem to adapt. Yeah, those two last points kind of walk hand in hand. It's a love-hate relationship. You get to learn so much because you're there's just never enough uh, yeah. us IT folks have a really tough time identifying, you know, the value of what we do with uh, business outcomes. So it's co- sometimes just like every other organization or every other part of the organization difficult to justify additional resources. We're all fighting over the same right. resources. Right. So with that said, we've talked about the challenges. We've talked about the advice you give to uh, folks just entering the field from college. Yeah. Let's do a little bit more self-reflection on your career. What's one of your proudest moments or achievements within your IT career? Yeah, you know, I've had many right, crowning achievements, and I don't think they can be attributed to me. Uh, you know, most of those have been victories where the team that get, came together and, and rallied around a given cause, uh, Keith, and made things happen. And again, I keep coming back because it was a very recent one, uh, the, the effort 
that the team had put into preparing us for a sort of a pandemic situation, even though we didn't know we were preparing for a pandemic situation. But the investment made in putting that technology in place, ubiquitous access for staff, um, you know, came to fruition. So f- to see that come together, to see the team um, put ourselves in a position that we could have people working effectively from home after a week period in, in, in March of 2020, that was huge. I mean, that was a proud moment for me. And there have been lots of things like that over the years. But again, it's been that team effort and bringing together something that is of value to people. So now that we're on a topic of the pandemic, let's talk about uh, a couple of things. One, how has this new era of just life and how the impact of pandi- and the pandemic, how has it changed your team, both personally and professionally? Yeah, that's a good question. And, you know, I think the effects may be profound and something that we haven't uh, really latched on to yet. And, uh, you know, I wonder where that will lead us up. So, I, you know, perhaps like you, Keith, I, I worked remotely for four years and there are pros and cons. Right. But I've been sort of through that. Um, I, I think the general sense of my team is they like the flexibility afforded by the work from home arrangement, but they find it very, very hard to sort of um you know, decompress, remove themselves from the fact that their computer or monitor is sitting in the living room or whatever. So I do worry a little bit about people pushing themselves harder than they ought to because they don't get that break throughout the day. But overall, I think it's been a very positive experience. Yeah. So with that, how do you how do you help your teams decompress? You know, before with uh, when we all went into the office space, we could have these get togethers, we can have team building exercises, we can have things to help us to kind of build teams as as you're looking at new hires and bringing folks on. How have you as a leader helped your team just with the soft parts of the job? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's interesting. I, I within Flexera we have a camera on f- uh, philosophy, which is huge, right? So you always keep your camera turned on, uh, and I think that that is absolutely huge in terms of you know the engagement uh, across across the company. Um, but our team, and and again, this was not something I could take credit for. They've been really good about putting together a little sort of you know get togethers on Teams where they meet after work and they talk about whatever's on their mind, and and it's wonderful, right? So. Is it the same as office banter? Probably. I would say there's very little difference. They're not physically getting together, but they're certainly interacting uh, at a social level uh, on a weekly basis. So let's switch over to more of the technical conversation, the, yeah. the, the tackling and the, the blocking and tackling of your job. Sure. One of the things that I think has changed quite a bit, especially in the past few months, not just in um, and over the course of the pandemic, but specifically, if we look at other ISVs that are having challenges, you're both the CIO in the CISO. So you have two heads that may at t- time seem to conflict one another. What are the top issues that's basically keeping you up at night? If you if it keeps it up, keep if you're the type of personality that things up at night worrying about work. Yeah, as I get older, I find I'm, I'm, I'm not sleeping as well as I used to when I would keep. But, uh, but you know, I would say, you know, cybersecurity for anyone, whether you're a CIO or a CISO or in a CISO role, it's got to be top of mind today, right? The, the threats are becoming more sophisticated. Um, you hear about all the ransomware attacks and things taking place um, on that front. So cer- certainly that is top of mind for me. And, and, you know, really for me, it's a lot of, a lot of that is understanding what my estate looks like, what assets I have within the company, where they're at, who owns them, uh, do they store, process, transmit personal data. So that's a big, huge, huge part of it. Um, I would say the second part too, is I am a steward, so to speak, of the, of the company's, uh, budget, right? So I have to be frugal and, um, effective in my decisions from an IT financial investment. So I always have to question whether the investments that I'm looking at or thinking of making, whether or not they make sense. Am I spending money on the right things? Can we demonstrate a return on our investments? Are we spending too much or too little? So there are, there are a number of things that uh, certainly keep me occupied in the wee hours of the morning. So you have this interesting relationship with the industry. You're both a CIO. Yeah. But you're also a CIO of 
a technology company that sells to other CIOs. Right. With that said, you know, there's a lot of buzzwords, blockchain, AI, and you talked about some of the, well, one of the things that's keeping you up mostly, which, which is this ability to uh, identify, identify and protect your company's assets. As you look at, you know, kind of these buzzwords, this feel some of the things that you're most excited about, not from the buzzword perspective, but how it will impact your day-to-day -day job as a CIO and your ability to help other CIOs reach their goals. Yeah, you know, I think there are, so there are obviously a, a number of interesting technologies out there. Um, our artificial intelligence, machine learning on the cybersecurity front, that is huge. I think the problem and the scale of the problem is too big for mere mortals to handle alone. So uh, that's always interesting to me. Um, blockchain fascinates me, uh, though, in ways, um, really, really, it fascinates me because of the innovative ways in which it's been applied, Keith. And I think for CIOs, we've become... Uh, it'll become clear over time, um, you know, the relevance there. But, you know, I just read an article about, uh, what did they call it, non-fungible tokens with respect to digital art and money being made and sales happening there. I mean, who, who would have envisioned something like that? So I think there are some never-ending possibilities associated with blockchain that, um, that will be interesting to see as it develop in the next few years. So let's talk about, as we talk about new technologies, let's talk about old technologies. One yeah. of the things that I pu push CIOs and CTOs on is that you can't add a new technology without subtracting a new technology. Right. Otherwise, you overwhelm your people. Yes. What seems to be simple adds more complexity because you have to eliminate some of the landscape. What technologies are kind of on its way out? Yeah. If well, any. Yeah, good question. So we have technologies that are probably a little older and, and certainly we would like to weed them out if possible and maybe replace them with a SaaS solution that is of less, uh, you know, creates less impact on the team. Um, I, I would say to your point, anything that's within the environment that, um, you know, it's past its day, it doesn't really have a, a it doesn't really have uh, a need to be there anymore. Maybe it's uh, it's end of life. Maybe it's old. Maybe it's deprecated. Maybe it's not supported. Maybe it's got no owner and it's rudderless. Anything that requires TLC and it's not getting TLC. I want to know about those. So that ties back to what's within your estate. Are there systems out there that you should be concerned of and you don't want to, you don't want to keep them around. You got to put a bullet in them, decommission them either because it's, there's an overhead and expense associated with that or there's risk associated with those assets as well. Um, so we're always looking for those opportunities to just you know, trim, uh, take off the excess. You know, I've always struggled with this throughout my career. Wherever I go is getting a handle around what is it that we have? Yes. What is it that we use? What is it that we can do better than what we're doing today? And what is it we just need to stop doing and have somebody else do for us? Yeah. And I think that's one of the key themes or value points for the FlexEra team is even if you guys look at the state of the cloud report and, and just talking about having that eye forward on the uh, on the future while, you know, just kind of looking at what you have today. Really interesting uh, question that we'll end up with as a boomerang, as someone who went out and from FlexEra and came back in, what are some of the insights that you've had in your role at Flexera and having all these tools at your disposal that you wish you could just relay to your other CIOs and like, you know what, your life would be just easier. Not, not even if you just use Flexera as a product, but take these core concepts. Yeah, you know, we talked about emerging technologies, new technologies, and the promise and potential they, they bring. But, you know, I'm a huge believer, too, Keith, in, in, in just going back to basics. So, um, again, on the security front, I think a lot of good cybersecurity stems from good IT hygiene and best practices. So for me, it's it's exactly what you you spoke to. Um, you know, we, we do use our own tools internally, Flexera tools, to, to figure out what it is we actually have. Um, what risks might be associated with the ownership of those systems, uh, especially as we talked about end of life or old deprecated ones. Um, and then are we spending too much or too little? So really, you know, a lot of the concepts having gone out there and come back, you know, the problems are still the same problems. We're still dealing with the same stuff, Keith. Uh, the solutions might have changed over time. 
But uh, I really think it's it's a case of getting back to basics, putting good practices, IT hygiene and practices in place. And yes, within Flexera, we certainly have tools to help us with our on-premise risk and spend and certainly our in-cloud uh, risk and spend. Cool. This has been a great conversation. I've learned a lot. Yeah. It's always insightful to see someone at the highest levels of IT management, share their experiences, share their priorities, and help give insights into the future. Speaking of insights, thank you for joining us for IT Insights. We'll talk to you next episode.